there, Jim here. Today we're going to have a look at this Next Peak NC201, what is said to be a seven stage intelligent pulse repair charger. So this has, if we can see here in the diagram, seven stages that it promotes. There's a desulfurization stage, a trickle charging stage, a constant current charging stage, a constant voltage charging stage, battery current detection, compensation charging, and floating charging. So this is a pretty common pattern you see in what are considered to be these pulse repair chargers. The main aspect here is this desulfurization phase, and that's meant to remove the buildup uh, of sort of a sulfurization layer on the uh, lead plates in a typical lead acid battery that inhibit the chemical reactions that are necessary to make a lead acid battery work. And so um, there's this mode that these chargers can operate in that's intended to kind of uh, uh, loosen, if you will, or get the reverse that sulfurization. Now it's not perfect, it's not ideal, it, it won't restore uh, a battery to new, but it can be useful to get uh, a little bit more life out of a battery that has had uh, a poor uh, buildup or a bad buildup of, of sulfur uh, on the plates. So that's what this can do. It uh, Also, if you see here, it can do 10 amps for a 12 volt battery or for a, a 24 volt battery, it can do five amps. Uh, I purchased this unit on my own, so I hope it, uh, it works well. Uh, I just wanna mention that if you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up, or better yet, please subscribe to my channel. I appreciate questions and comments. Uh, they're always welcome if you have suggestions for other videos. Uh, I appreciate the feedback. It helps me know where I can focus my efforts. So I've got a battery here, by the way. Uh, this is a, a nine amp hour battery and it's not fully charged. It's, uh, it's about, I don't know, 75% charged. So let's uh, get into the box here and see what we have. Okay, so start out with a couple of uh, clamps here. That's good. Okay, that's all there is. So the units in some bubble wrap here. And there's a, a manual uh, that's to uh, plug in to the power current. Um, we see on the back here a variety of certifications, but unfortunately none of them are a uh, uh, UL, CSA, ETL, TUV, or that kind of a certification, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, so uh, tricky to make use of this device in, uh, in North America, uh, certainly in Canada. Let's, uh, uh, can see the display. We'll have a longer look at the display again. The same sort of picture here for the uh, stages of charging. And uh, well, you'll see there's a mode here. So the manual, uh, so it's about, uh, it's double-sided, seven pages are in English, and the uh, other side here appears to be in German, so it's English and German. Let's have a look now at how this unit operates. The first thing that we want to do before we uh, start charging it is we want to connect the uh, clips here to the battery. We start with the positive connection first and then we go to the negative connection and as soon as we do that because there is some voltage in the battery the charging unit begins to show us some information. So it shows us the voltage that it's picking up and it also shows us the current temperature. So you can see 11.9 volts, 22 degrees Celsius and it's showing here, if you will, uh, let me zoom in actually. Okay, so you can see, as I mentioned, the uh, voltage and the temperature, and here it's showing 12 volts. And also, 
There's a, a bit of a bar graph here that's showing what it believes to be the current state of charge of the battery. Uh, and that's uh, a, sort of a guesstimate, if you will, based on the battery voltage, because the battery tends to put out a little more voltage when it's fully charged and a little less voltage when it's, uh, when it's not fully charged. Now, the next thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to plug it in. In my case, it means I'm going to turn on the, uh, the electrical socket. And uh, we'll see what happens after we plug it in. And it says in the instructions to look away <laughs> when doing that. Okay. So now the display has changed a little bit. We see fan has come on and showing us the charging current it's applying, the temperature, and the, uh, the voltage. So we've got current, temperature, and voltage. And this graph is kind of giving us uh, some sort of an animation, if you will, of the um, charging uh, taking place. Now, there are a few settings here, so let's look at the settings that we have. There's uh, a mode called standard. Standard is, is what they say should be used for uh, maintenance-free batteries. So these would typically be car batteries, uh, the more modern ones where you don't really have to uh, put any fluids in. AGM, uh, AGM being absorbent glass mat uh, and gel cells. So the battery that we hooked up is an AGM battery. And so this is the position for charging an AGM battery. Uh, this is the position for wet cells. So wet cells would be cells where uh, there are some uh, caps over the cells and you might need to add more water or other kinds of uh, fluid in order for the uh, charging to take place. And then there's a setting for what they call motorcycle or trickle charging. This is kind of an interesting setting because uh, the instructions for the charger say that we should use this for small batteries, uh, so maybe uh, like the battery we have here, or uh, when we want to go into uh, they call trickle or float charging. So float charging is a form uh, of keeping a 12 volt battery attached to a charger and feeding it just a teeny little bit of current so you can leave it plugged in all the time. And so that's what this what they mean here by this trickle. And then the last setting here is uh, what they call the repair mode. And so the modes are changed with this mode selection switch. But repair mode goes through a process of uh, uh, alternating high and low voltage in order to do uh, some uh, desulfation or desulfurization of the plates in the battery. So as the battery ages, sulfur builds up on the plates. And in that repair mode, by oscillating the, the current peaks, and the, uh, according to a, a kind of a pattern that's been established, that can help loosen the sulfur from the plates. And so the, the desulfurization or the pulse repair can help breathe a little more life into uh, an older battery. One of the things about desulfurization is that when it's in this repair mode, it's constantly going through this cycle. And that should be done for about uh, two to four hours is, is the typical recommendation. And when you're doing the repair for two to four hours, uh, you want to kind of keep an eye on things because uh, a battery could start to leak, it could start to overheat uh, because that puts a lot of stress on the plates by putting sort of high voltage spikes into the, into the system. So you do want to keep an eye on it when you're operating it in repair mode. Uh, the last thing to mention is uh, that this mode, yeah, so we've been talking for a while, uh, the mode can't be changed uh, 30 seconds after power up. So in, in the first 30 seconds, you can change the mode, but uh, after 30 seconds go by, you can't change the mode anymore. And the only way to change the mode is to power cycle the unit. So I'd have to unplug it uh, from the mains and then plug it back in and I'd be able to change the mode. Now you might be able to hear it. Uh, now that the charging is operating, the fan uh, turned on. In fact, the fan turned on uh, almost immediately after I powered it up. Uh, it's a little bit, air coming out of there is a little bit warm, but not really hot. Now, because 
I'm working with this smaller battery. I thought it would be useful to see what to expect with a small battery rather than a larger uh, battery unit because the, the high charging voltage or the high charging current was more suitable for a, a large battery. It's really not a good idea to put a high charging current through a small battery like the one that I am using uh, because the, the maximum charging current that, uh, that you should use is about one, uh, there's a formula and the maximum charging current is about 0.3 times the capacity. So the capacity of this battery is uh, 9 amp hours. So 0.3, uh, um, 0.3 times uh, 9 would tell us that a maximum charging current that we should use for this when we're rapid charging it is about 2.7 amps. So in order to not really destroy this battery, uh, I've stopped that sort of high current uh, charging mode and I've moved it over to the motorcycle trickle charge setting. And so that's designed to charge at a lower power level than, uh, than the uh, AGM gel setting, which would be meant for a large battery. So, so let's uh, see what happens now when we turn it on, when we have it in the motorcycle uh, trickle level. And so we'll turn it on. And so the first thing you see is that the unit enters uh, initially a desulfurization process. And so that's indicated by the DFS here. So there's an initial desulfurization process that <coughs> operates and uh, that desulfurization process operates for about five minutes. And so uh, I'm gonna pause uh, the recording but we'll come back uh, after the desulfurization process uh, has run its course and it switches into charging mode. So the desulfurization process just uh, completed for the initial go here. And we can see now that the, uh, the voltage is 13.2 volts. Uh, so a lower charging voltage and uh, the current, the charging current, is about 3.3 amps. So a lower, uh, a lower charging uh, current as well. So with, uh, with smaller batteries, as I was saying, with smaller batteries, you have to use a, a lower charging current uh, because uh, too much current, it, it can only uh, absorb energy uh, so quickly. And so if you're pushing through uh, more current at a higher voltage, um, uh, it'll absorb that, but uh, uh, it, it'll quickly sort of max out. And so you won't be able to get as much energy into the battery as its capacity because the, uh, the chemical process requires some time. It takes some time to push the energy into the battery just as it takes time for the energy to come out of the battery. And so if you try to push the energy in uh, faster, then the uh, chemical process can accommodate, uh, that'll also shorten the, the lifespan of the battery. So we've been charging for a little while now, and a couple of things to notice. The charging current, still around 3.39, 3.4 amps, but you'll see in order to generate that same uh, current, because the battery is now, its capacity uh, it's getting some, some charge into it. The, the, in order to keep the current at that 3.39 uh, amp level, the voltage has had to increase. So if you recall when we started, uh, the charging voltage was 13.5 uh, volts, 13.7 now. So it's now 13.7 in order to achieve that 3.3, uh, 3.4 amp uh, charging current. So at this stage of the charge cycle, it's trying to keep the charge current uh, constant. And in order to keep the charge current constant, it has to increase the voltage as, uh, as the battery gets charged. Now, there are uh, maximum voltages when you're charging uh, these sorts of uh, smaller batteries that you, you don't want to uh, go past. And so right now, the capacity is somewhere above uh, 60%. And so what we'll see as we get closer to full capacity, 
the charge current and the charge voltage will be a lot different from what we're seeing right now. Now we can see that the unit has come up to 13.9 volts. Uh, still the same charge current, so we can definitely see that this uh, charger, its objective is to maintain uh, a high current rate, about 3.39, 3.4 amps, for as long as possible. And so, uh, typically, the uh, rapid charging, the high current charging, will go until the capacity is 80% full. And so the next question I would have is, just how high uh, is the unit going to drive the voltage uh, in this sort of rapid charging high current mode? And so let's uh, keep an eye on the voltage that it's using. And so it'll be interesting to see at what point does this charger flip over from the, uh, the rapid charging mode where it's putting in the constant current to the uh, trickle charge mode where it's uh, maintaining the voltage at the trickle charge level. Now 14.5 volts, as we'll see here in the display a second. 14.5 volts, still constant current, 3.38, 3.39 amps. So we can see that as the capacity is increasing towards being full, the, uh, the voltage applied, now you can see 14.6 volts, the voltage that needs to be applied in order to maintain that constant current rapid charge factor at 3.3 amps, 3.4 amps, that voltage needs to be uh, increasing. And we've gone from 13.5 volts all the way up to 14.6 volts. And the question really is now 14.7 volts. At what point are we gonna shift from constant current charging into constant voltage charging? So the voltage has now increased to 14.8 volts. And we can start to see now the current is starting to drop off. So uh, it's likely that the unit is set to not go above 14.8 volts. And we can see once again 14.8 volts here, but now the charge current is starting to drop off. So no longer is it at 3.39, 3.4 amps. We can see we're now down to 3.3. Uh, amps, and the next cycle around, it'll probably be lower than that. Okay, 3.30, 3.29, 3.28. So now we can see that the maximum charging voltage that the unit is going to go to is uh, 14.8 volts. And once it reaches the 14.8 volts, the voltage doesn't go any higher, but now the charging current starts to drop off. And what will end up happening uh, is that that current is going to drop off fairly significantly over the next uh, little while. So an interesting threshold here, the charge current has now come down below 3 amps. And as has been the case now for the last little while, the charging voltage is now uh, fixed at 14.8 volts. So another transition here can see that the uh, charging voltage still at 14.8 but the charging current now has come down below 2 amps. I think this may be a good time to have a look at the uh, charge cycle here that's shown. This is uh, out of the manual and so we can see that uh, we've gone through stage 4 or we, we initially we were in stage three, constant current charging. So we saw that. Then we came to stage four, which was constant voltage charging. So we saw that the voltage was at uh, one point uh, or 14.8 volts for quite a while. The next stage is what they call battery current detection and compensation charging. And so we can see that in the compensation charging mode, uh, it does appear that it drives the voltage uh, a little bit higher. And then finally, after compensation charging finishes, stage 7 is what it calls floating charge. 
So it'll be interesting to see what happens here uh, in the display of the unit here, because you can see now we're hitting 14.9 volts. And so a little, it's a little bit difficult because the unit doesn't tell you, there are no uh, lights or indicators here that tell us which of these stages uh, it's operating in. But uh, my expectation is that we've probably moved into one of stage five or stage six, which is either the, um, uh, what they call the battery current detection stage five, or the compensation charging, charging which is stage six. Now we can see that it's transitioned to the full state. The fan is still running. One of the things that it doesn't do at this point though, is it doesn't tell us what the uh, voltage or charge current is at this stage. So I'm gonna try to uh, get a little bit of a read here using a multimeter. So now that the battery has reached full charge, I've got a couple of meters set up here. Um, so I want to understand what's happening in the trickle mode. And so we can see in trickle mode, the, um, the current, which is what's being measured on the fluke, the current is uh, going through a bit of a, a cycle, if you will, where it's going down to about, uh, well, let's use this feature. So it's going up to about uh, half, a, half an amp and down to close to, uh, close to zero. So about 10, 12 milliamps. Okay, so averaging about, uh, it says 41, uh, 42 milliamps. Okay. So once again, maxing about 500 milliamps and minimum down to about uh, 10 milliamps, 11 milliamps. Now let's look with the unity, I'm gonna measure the voltage. So let's look at what's happening at the, to the voltage in, uh, in standby mode or in trickle mode. Okay, so the voltage is pretty stable here at about 13.9 volts. I'm just gonna turn off the min max here. So in trickle mode, once we've reached full charge, the voltage is pretty stable. You can see 13.94, 13.95. So the voltage is pretty stable at 13.9 volts. Now that's a little higher uh, than what most people would recommend for uh, trickle mode. But at the same time, keep in mind that the, the current is uh, the current is a little lower too. Now, um, I will say that at 13.9 volts for trickle mode, the current will drop over several hours. So at this level, at 13.9 volts, the battery will still charge. And so the current will drop over, over several hours uh, because 13.9 volts is still a high enough voltage to put a little bit of current uh, back into the system. And so it'll just sort of stay in this mode. But what I like seeing is that the current has, the voltage has dropped now. Uh, so whereas before in the sort of more rapid charging mode, we were driving 14.9 uh, volts uh, at the peak there into the, into the system. Now the voltage has dropped down to 13.9 volts and we're seeing sort of a, a trickle current that varies between, uh, you know, 10 milliamps and, and 500 milliamps, roughly speaking. Okay. So there you have it. Uh, in summary, this next peak uh, NC201 charger is, uh, is quite the unit as, uh, as rapid charging goes. Uh, as we saw, it puts out quite a lot of uh, charging current initially and quite a, quite a high charging voltage. So the idea is to, uh, to charge the unit as, as uh, the battery as rapidly as possible. So with uh, as much current as possible. 
But at the same time, you've got to be careful not to drive too much voltage in because when the voltage goes above uh, 15 volts with a lead acid battery, uh, it starts breaking down the, uh, the water in the, in the system. And so that's not such a good idea. So I, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about using this, uh, this charger because of the very high voltages that it's applying to the batteries uh, in charging mode. I, I would have liked to see the voltage to be a little bit lower. In summary, I would be reluctant to use this charger the way things currently stand. The, uh, the charger says that it should accommodate, uh, especially in this motorcycle mode, batteries from uh, 2.2 amp hours and up, uh, except a charge current that it was running at, which was 3.4 amps, would suggest that the smallest battery capacity we would want to use is about uh, an 11.3, 11.4 amp hour battery. Uh, the charge current is a little higher than uh, one would like to see with a 9 amp hour battery like the one I was using here. So then the another thing that comes up then is the maximum charge voltage and the maximum charge voltage for uh, fast charging is also a little too high uh, and higher than one we would like to see because we'd like to see a maximum charge voltage of around 14.7 volts and uh, we could see the maximum charge voltage on this unit was hitting 14.8 and 14.9 volts. Um, then the trickle voltage or the so-called float voltage is also higher than we'd like to see. Um, you can see right now that the, the voltage on the sort of float side is hitting pretty much 14 volts uh, even. And so that float voltage is, is uh, two tenths of a volt higher than we'd like to see. The recommended maximum float voltage is 13.8 volts. You know, and, and while those differences, uh, you know, a tenth of a volt here, two tenths of a volt there, those might not seem like a lot, but these uh, parameters have been developed over decades in order to maximize battery life. Lead acid battery technology is, is fairly well established and it's been in use for over a hundred years. And uh, these higher charging voltages and higher charging currents, they'll charge the battery faster, but at the same time, they'll result in a shortening of the battery life by creating buildups on the, uh, on the plates um, and by causing sort of a, a breakdown of the, the liquids that are used internally in the battery to maintain operation. So really, like I said, the bottom line for me is uh, unless I can find some way to bring down the, the peak charging current or the peak charging voltage, uh, I, I really would have some second thoughts about using it. Now, um, at 10 amps in the sort of standard mode or the AGM gel mode, uh, wet cells, at 10 amps you could use uh, uh, a battery of, uh, of about 35 um, amp hours. Uh, or more. So, you know, a 35 amp hour uh, battery at 0.3C, that would lead to a charge current uh, of about uh, 10 amps. Um, and of course, if your battery capacitor capacity was even higher than that, 10 amp hours or a 10 amp charging current would be totally fine. So overall, um, like I said, we can see that the, the voltage is just a little too high uh, for, uh, for maintaining a productive battery life. And the charge current is a little too high, uh, if we're dealing with smaller, uh, batteries. So that, that would be batteries between the minimum, which is, uh, the manual says two amp hours and about, um, an 11 amp hour, uh, battery, right? The, the charge current is, is, is not suitable for batteries below about 11 amp hours. The charge current is just too high. We'd like to see a charge current uh, that's a little bit lower uh, for those smaller batteries. But if you were using a battery above uh, about 11.4, 11.5 amp hours, the charge current at 3.4 amps would, would be totally fine. Uh, but then once again, it would come down to the charge voltage 
uh, that's being used because that voltage is just going to be pushing the energy into the battery just a little too fast and is going to cause sort of adver um, undesirable behavior on the, on the lead plates inside the battery cell. Okay, well, I hope you found this uh, video to be informative. Thanks for watching. Please uh, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel, and until next time.